Now we're going to talk about the Winters PPC gauge, which is a process gauge. The typical process gauge in the industry today is it's four and a half inch dial size, and it comes with what's called a phenolic turret safety case. The reason it's called a turret case, because if you were to lay it on its back and take a look at it, it is sloped, and then the socket coming out the bottom kind of makes it look like the turret on the top of a tank. So that's how it got its name. The reason it's called a safety case or a full pattern safety case is behind the dial is a solid wall with only holes going through it to allow for fill fluid and to allow for the pointer shaft to come through. So the way it works is that if you'll notice on the back of the gauge or the case, there's a, uh, there's a plate that has a bladder on it. And you'll notice there's some little aluminum tabs. At eight PSI, this back will blow out. So the reason it's called a safety case is if the operator was standing in front of the gauge and the board on tube was to have catastrophic failure, the pressure would be relieved out the back and not come out the front towards the operator. Some of the features of the Winters PPC or process gauge is the Winters gauge is dry on the shelf but is field liquid fillable. Just by removing the plug at the top, glycerin or whatever fill fluid you want to use could be poured in to the appropriate level, then the plug put back in and it's good to go. Many of our competitors in the past, you had to buy special kits or order the gauges ahead of time so that they would could be liquid filled. Winters, on the other hand, has always provided liquid fillable gauges off the shelf. The PPC gauge comes with brass or stainless steel internals. More common in the industrial setting would be the 316 stainless steel wetted parts, which means your socket and your tube are 316 stainless steel. It also has a full pattern 304 uh, stainless steel movement in it. The accuracy of the Winters process gauge is half percent full scale. The process gauge is the most accurate gauge you can use in an industrial setting. Any more accuracy than that, going to quarter percent, those gauges are made for laboratory testing situations, but for the rigors of industrial process, the process gauge is the most accurate gauge you can use. Again, as we said, they come with a micrometer pointer, which means you can take the front bezel off, which is generally plexiglass but it can also be laminated safety glass if desired. Uh, fine adjustments for calibration can be made using the micrometer pointer. And these gauges are fully repairable. Uh, the accuracy, as we said, is half percent and they come in pressure ranges from full vacuum compound up to 20,000 PSI off the shelf. Connection sizes are standard a uh, half inch MPT bottom or quarter inch, or they can be back connect. Now on the Winters version, for a back connected gauge, it cannot be liquid filled. We have to go to a dampened movement, which we'll discuss in a moment. The Winters process gauge also comes with over and under load stops. What that means is they are physical metal stops that will stop the movement from coming off of the gears. So if you had slight over pressure or slight under pressure, the gauge won't lose its calibration. Now over and under load stops won't stop any gauge from getting damaged if you exceed the over pressure by more than 25% or if you go down into full vacuum. Because the process gauge and even the PFP gauge that we spoke of before is used in the industrial marketplace, Anything that 316 stainless steel will handle that doesn't have solids in it, the gauge can handle on its own. However, if you start getting into corrosive fluids or fluids that have 
uh, large particles in it that could clog the gauge, then you may need to go to a, what people call a chemical or diaphragm seal. This gauge mounts easily to the top of one. The uh, whole assembly is evacuated and filled with an incompressible fluid, thus allowing this gauge to be used in very corrosive or hazardous environments. Well, the process gauge only comes in the four and a half. Yeah, they, if it's PSI with all Winters gauges, if it has an R1 at the end of the part number, it'll be PSI only. If the part number has no uh, R1 or no R designation at the end, then it's PSI KPA dual scale. Mm -hmm. One of the features of this case, in addition to being a safety case, you'll notice that it has the three feet that are actually uh, part of the case. What this allows is this gauge can be mounted to a wall, as you can see the holes, and a screw can be put in so that it can be mounted and screwed right into the wall and thus do your piping from there. So you don't have to add an extra flange. And because it is raised, it still allows the back to blow off if there was a failure of the board on tube. The gauge can come panel mount. We do make some uh, special brackets that will pull it up to the back of a panel that will hook in and hold it in place. And we also make a hinge front ring case, which is not liquid fillable, but again, will allow it to be put into a panel. They generally come dry off the shelf. If you desire it to be liquid filled, you state it, and that's designated by a dash G at the end of the part number stating that it's glycerin filled. If silicones are required because of temperature constraints, then there'd be a dash SF at the end of the part number. All the internals on the process gauge of the stainless steel one are stainless. Mm -hmm. Even if the wetted parts were brass, the movement still would be stainless steel. Yes, they do come in brass wetted parts, and generally uh, that would be for wastewater treatment plants and things like that where they're being put on diaphragm seals anyway so they really don't worry too much about the stainless. Yeah, the PTR, if you look on the website, uh, what you'll find is the PTR has a diaphragm mounted and welded to the bottom of the gauge. So what that does is if someone's installing it because it's welded, you don't have to worry about them breaking the diaphragm away from the gauge and losing the fill fluid. Because once you do that to an assembly, you render it useless. It can no longer sense the pressure.